you've got to live with it on a daily basis. You've got to live with taking taking the animals. I don't. It's not something that sits easy with me. Mm. But it's still it's my job. You know, it's my job, and that's what we've been doing. And as long as you're putting the small stuff back and keep and treating it as as a thing for the future, then I've, I've, I'm happy with that. I can I can sleep at night. Yeah. And fishing sustainably and electrically. So. Yeah. Whenever you talk about electrification, the conversation quickly turns to charging anxiety and range. But as the technology improves, it allows us to ask some much, much more interesting questions. Questions like, what else could and should we electrify? How could this technology make our lives that much more comfortable? And what environment should we stop spewing polluting things into? And it's those questions that bring us to places like this, breathtakingly beautiful places like this. We are in Taviallick in Scotland, where we're here to meet Hans, because we're on board the UK's first fully electric fishing boat. So we're here to find out how it was lovingly restored and electrified, and hopefully to find some lobsters too. Love the Fully Charged Show? Join us live in the South this October and in Australia, London and Canada in 2025. Hey, Lorna Jane is my fishing boat. She's named after my uh, youngest daughter. Uh, it's a, a, a Cygnus GM21, which is uh, probably what is known in the, the whole fishing and boating industry as the, the grey Fergie of the fishing industry. It's a, a really robust, strong, solid hull. Old boat, 1979, 1978, I think that boat was built. I think they started building them in 1975, so it's a really trusted, solid design that is is really efficient. So primarily, I wanted to to change uh, convert the boat to all electric uh, for environmental reasons. I mean, that's the the big sort of over over the overshadowing uh, reason. But with uh, inside that, there's lots and lots of different reasons. Uh, the the fishing industry I feel is really far behind and anything to do with meeting its net zero targets or it's 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 lowering its emissions it's there's a, it's a real head in the sand approach to that and i felt that i had the 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 capabilities i've got the facilities i've got the workshop i've got the the, the lifetime of fishing and and boat building behind me i've been following the tech i'm interested in in the the pushing boundaries i'm interested in developing new things so, so that side of it really appealed to me as a as a challenge, I, and also I, I just feel like oh the fishing industry I've had a whole lifetime out of the fishing, and I owe my whole my whole earnings my whole life to the fishing industry. So so I really want to put something back into it. Hoping that these will be productive. But you never know, that's the bother with lobster fishing. <laughs> yeah. You never know. Now this is actually also being powered by the batteries, right? Yeah. Okay. And this is the noisiest part of the whole the whole day and it's I start to really grudge it now. Noisiest bit. Yeah. What's it gonna be? I think we can cope with that. Yep. What's your guess of how many there's going to be? If, if there's one, I'll be happy. <laughs> and there's two. Ah! Oh my uh, goodness! There's two, that's good. Right, so... <gasps> but, right, so there's not two, so that's, that's eggs. Oh my gosh. So we can't, we can't land that. Okay. Yeah, that's got to go back. So that one's back. And that one, to me, looks a bit small. So, and yes, it is too small. So you would measure it from the back of its eye socket to here, ah. to the, carap the carapace, and that's that's undersized. Can I can I release it? Yeah. You go on, you go. <laughs> Be free! <laughs> <laughs> 
Vessels in the UK's small-scale coastal fleet can bid for up to £40,000 to trial hybrid and electric propulsion, and up to £20,000 to fund replacement combustion engines with a more fuel-efficient equivalent. Despite that, Hans was the first to embark on electrifying a vessel, and determined to show other fishermen and women what was possible, he made a documentary, which when aired in the village, outsold Barbie. But going first is never easy and has a tendency to expose the gaps in a process not yet adapted for electrification. When, when I was building the boat, the, the technical side of it was straightforward. There was, there was all the kit was there. It wasn't anything that I found difficult. It was new to me, but there wasn't anything that was an actual a stumbling block or a challenge. But, but the, the real difficult process was administration. The, the amount of, of admin involved in it was... I mean, if I had to list three, three stumbling blocks or challenges, it would be administration, administration and administration. I had two main bodies I needed to deal with. I needed to, the Maritime Coast Guard Agency. They have got to approve every boat safe to go. It's every commercial boat in the country, no matter what it's doing, whether it's a pilot boat or a, a, a container ship or a small fishing boat, has to be a, coded and deemed safe to go to sea. When I came to them with, I, with the notion of converting my boat to electric, they didn't have a coding, there was nothing in place for that. So I was left with trying to write a code book, right, trying to write something that was actually, that they were happy with and that I was happy with or that was practically possible and they did not have a, you know there was no, there was nothing really in place so we had to start from 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 scratch with that which then moved on to the second a uh, problem was that I'd been given fund had been allocated a, a funding percentage to contribute to the boat which was 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 very welcome but with the funding allocation that I got there was a deadline and it was a really short deadline so I'd, I had a less than six months from when I got approved from the, the funding to having it completed, to having the boat completed and in the water with its MCA coding which was they hadn't written yet so th that, that became virtually an impossible task. So what have you got here? Because I think underneath here are the batteries. What kind of capacity are we talking about? So the batteries, I've got five nine kilowatt batteries given a total of 45 kilowatt hours of is, storage, which is similar to a small car. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's less than, I see that you've got a Kia Nero. Yeah. It must be sort of similar. Yeah, it's le well, it's less, it's, it's about 64 kilowatts. So, so it's a good bit less, yeah. And what kind of range or hours of operation would that give you typically? So that gives me, it depends on the weather. The weather's obviously a big influence, a big factor in that. But but on a day like this, I've got 60 miles, nautical miles of range. And on a bad day, I've probably got 40 miles of range. And is that enough? Do you have, Or do you ever feel limited by that? I've I keep a wee note of stuff and I categorise a, a day when I'm, I've got a I categorise a day when I feel I've been restricted by range or speed and um, there's very few days that I've been really affected by it. So you also have some solar here and I know that the charging at the harbour isn't necessarily that convenient but do you ever get days when you can just run fully on solar? I, I can fish two days a week uh, through the summer between the equinoxes I can fish two days a week pretty much purely off of solar. Between May and the start of September, I, I only plugged the boat in four times to charge. The rest of the time was solar powered. Four times between May and September? Yeah. That's It's remarkable. I mean, I'm, I'm as blown away by that as anybody. It's, it's, admittedly, I'm not doing huge mileages. I'm maybe working 20 miles a day, but it's still, I mean, that's a total fuel bill. Uh, this year, my total fuel bill has been 300 and uh, 335 pounds. God, that's pretty <laughs> good. 75p a kilowatt, oh. which is is a no-brainer, yeah. And then you've got a 20 kilowatt motor that is um, powering the propellers. Do you notice any sort of nuances with that? Is it as fast as your previous boat? Uh, it's, yes, it's, it's got every bit as much power. It's equivalent to the 40 horsepower. I've got as much oomph, but I tend to run it at, at, with less... Uh, 
less of the full throttle. I, I, I keep the throttle just set nicely so the boat is moving along uh, at its comfortable speed, which is five knots, which is uh, very fast walking. I'm, I've adapted to, to, to what the boat can do, as you do to every circumstance in your life, you adapt to what you've got. And I'm, happy, I'm really convinced that this is viable for a lot of other boats. Previously, Hans was spending £20 a day on diesel, and while that's more than three times the cost he's now spending, it doesn't even begin to account for the reduction in maintenance and spare parts that Hans enjoys today. Unquestionably, the numbers stack up, but convincing others to take the plunge and go electric in an industry steeped in legacy can remain a challenge. It's attitude. I don't know how you change attitudes. I think you can only change attitude and, or, or approach, uh, desire. People have got to want to, to, to change. I mean, I'm quite, what I'm quite pleased with about this whole project is that changes are coming, whether you, you, whether you agree with climate change or, or whether you, no matter what, what you think, there's changes that are happening quickly and there's not a lot you can do about it. I feel that I'm embracing this on my own terms. Whereas a lot of people are going to be left kicking and dragging, you know, and fighting before they get put in the position where they've got to change. Whereas if you if you come with a different attitude, it's it's a it's a really exhilarating and a enjoyable process. I've I've loved the whole. This this has been a really nourishing, interesting build that has. TikTok, I've, I've got so much out of it, rather than just the fishing boat side of things, it's just, I love the whole developing and changing things. I, d I don't think you get anywhere with saying it's all, all roses. There, the, 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 there are uh, things that the boat's not as, as good at, but at the end of the day, I've, I've worked for, for a year and a half now, and I have but no diesel at all, absolutely none. That's, and I've worked at a commercial competitive level that, that is, a, is functioning. I can go out and make a decent living with the boat with not burning any diesel. So that's, I mean, that's, it's hard to, hard to argue with that. There are, I mean, the, I mean you can argue the cost, the, the, you know, the batteries and the mining, all, all of that side of things. But I think if you weigh it up, the boat's definitely, a, a, producing a, a, a really clean, low-impact product. As is often the case, the technology exists, but the mindsets and processes required to deploy them easily don't always. And we often wonder, how much difference can individual action make? But if it wasn't for people like Hans, how would those processes or mindsets ever hope to change? I so admire Hans and his boundless motivation to electrify the Lorna Jane and hopefully make it easier for others to follow in her wake. Let us know what you think in the comments. Please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.